Hi, this is Adam from ProjectionHub.com. Hey, look, you know, creating accurate sales projections for a startup can be incredibly difficult. But, you know, it's often a necessary part of raising capital. And whether you're a banker or, or investors actually believe your sales projections, uh, that's really irrelevant. Um, what they want to see is that you can create a realistic, logical, bottoms-up sales projection. And that's exactly what I hope to help you do in this video. So real quick, let me just outline what I plan to discuss in this video uh, so you can skip ahead to relevant ma material for your specific situation. Uh, first, I'm going to explain how 90% of entrepreneurs project sales and why it's a major turnoff to investors and bankers. Then I'm going to look at how you should create a set of logical and bottoms-up assumptions. Then I want to look at two examples of startup sales projections for a retail store and a website. And then finally, I'm going to end with just a few final tips. So there are two common ways that entrepreneurs try to project sales. They try to take the easy way out. And the first is a top-down approach, where you say something kind of like this. Um, let's say there's $100 million dollars spent on fast food in city XYZ. Then you say uh, there's a hundred restaurants in that city. So the average sales for, uh, for a year must be a million dollars per store. I think our new restaurant can, can be average. So we're just going to assume one million in sales projections for the first year. That's one way people try to go about projecting sales. A second most common way to project sales is to use a competitor-based approach. So let's say you're opening a coffee shop. You might learn that Starbucks down the road uh, generates a million dollars per store in sales annually. You think we can do at least half as well as Starbucks. So our sales projections for the first year should be 500,000. You know, both of these approaches are careless and they show bankers and investors that, that you really don't understand your business. Now, I want to jump into the right way to create financial projections. The right way to create sales projections is to create a set of bottom-up logical assumptions. There's no perfect way to outline the process that works for every single business, but I think the following outline is going to be helpful here. I think you need to start with traffic. Uh, this is potential customers, whether you're a website with people searching on Google for your type of products or, or services, or maybe you're a gas station on the, right off the interstate and uh, you know the amount of vehicle traffic that passes your stop every day. That's where you come up with that initial traffic assumption. That's your market potential. Then you need to determine how much of that traffic is going to turn into a lead. You know, if you're a store, uh, maybe a lead is uh, someone at the mall who walks by and, and actually turns into your store and enters your store. That's a lead. Then what percentage of those leads will you convert into customers? How much will a customer purchase? What, what's the average sales price? And then finally, will they ever purchase again? If you can come up with reasonable assumptions based on data, based on facts, if you use this outline, this process, you're going to come up with sales projections that you can actually defend. Whether they're right may or may not be true, but you're going to be able to defend when an investor questions you on your sales projections. You'll have a reason. So let's look at a quick example here. Let's say you open a women's clothing store at a shopping mall. You know, you're going through the same process. You're going to start by looking at traffic potential. You can find out from the mall how many visitors they see per year and what percentage are women in your age demographic. Now, that will give you your potential market. Your leads are the number of people you expect to walk into your store. To come up with a guess for this number, I would suggest, you know, why don't you just run to, to your local uh, mall and watch other similar stores to yours. What percentage of the people who walk by these stores actually go in? 
Then watch to see what percentage of people that walk in actually purchase. That's your conversion percentage. You might also find conversion rates online for your type of business. Um, for example, I'm sure the conversion rate uh, for walking into a Walmart would be much different than the conversion rate uh, for walking into um, uh, Macy's, for instance. Then you need to estimate the average sale price for your store. Again, you might be able to find this info online for your industry, or you can simply walk into a competitor's store and observe. So now I want to look at sales projections uh, for a website. And I'm actually going to use an example um, of m one of my own websites uh, in the executive summary niche. So there are 600,000 monthly searches for the core uh, executive summary related keywords. But then there are easily probably over a million monthly searches for related keywords that my site can uh, can and actually does generate traffic from. So I started with monthly Google searches of a million. But then there's another additional 30% of potential traffic uh, from other search engines. So I added 30%. So now we're up to uh, total searches of 1.3 million. And then I figured um, the percent of traffic captured. So of that 1.3 million, um, what's my click-through rate going to be? And you can find that information online um, for for um, various industries and niches. Um, but I, I estimate a 10%. And that might be a little high, but it's not out of the realm of possibility. So I said monthly search engine traffic um, is going to be 130,000. Now, I also know that for my website, 37% um, of my traffic comes from other sources other than search engines. So maybe that's like Facebook or Twitter, um, referrals or, or links from other websites. So I added another 37%. Uh, and we come up with a total monthly traffic potential of 206,349. Now, now that I have that number, um, I need to average revenue per customer. Um, so I'm looking in the past here, and, and I have a bit of an advantage here because the business is already existing, um, but I know that on average, I earn about five cents in revenue per visitor. Um, so you'll need to find out for your industry, what, what can you expect in revenue per visitor? Um, this is an assumption that um, is really important. Um, obviously, if, if I was earning a dollar per visitor versus uh, five cents per visitor, uh, it was going to drastically sway your projections. Um, but I, I think you'll be able to find um, like businesses where you, you can estimate this. Now, assuming that uh, revenue uh, per visitor stays at five cents per visitor all the way up through 200,000 visitors, um, I can project just over $10,300 in monthly revenue. So that outline right there gives you just an example of one way to kind of use a bottoms up approach. Um, instead of just saying, I think I can get 10,000 in revenue, I kind of, I do the math, I show the math and I can defend it um, if someone asks. Where did you come up with these numbers? Well, I, I can show. And, and that's really the key that I want to get across here. You want to be able to show where you come up with these numbers. All right, so if you have any questions at all, um, you know, email me at adam at projectionhub.com. I'd be happy to uh, walk through the process with you, uh, answer any questions. I know that this is not all-encompassing um, how to create financial projections. What I'm trying to get across here are some of the basic um, ideas and, and uh, strategies to create realistic financial projections. It's not easy, um, and there's no perfect way to do it. But I think if you come in with the mindset of a bottoms-up, logical, data-driven approach, you're going to be far better off.